It's very rare these days that a British politician is proud to say they're taking their policies from Europe. But the Mayor of London seems to be the exception. Under pressure from cyclists during the election campaign, Boris Johnson signed up to the Love London Go Dutch campaign, agreeing to adopt some of the cycling policies from Europe's number one cycling nation. So what exactly does that mean? Andrew Cryan went to Holland to find out. No helmets, no high-vis jackets, no panicked look on people's faces. Welcome to Groningen in Holland, the world's number one cycling city. Now here, between 50 and 60% of all journeys made by any type of transport are done by bicycle. Compare that to England and a city like London, it's only 3%. But that hasn't happened overnight. In fact, it's down to decades and decades of sometimes very controversial decisions. Once upon a time, Holland had similar traffic to the UK. Congested roads became hard for cyclists. By the 1970s, the soaring number of road deaths involving children became a source of public outrage. A generation of Dutch politicians made an enemy of the car and a friend of the bicycle. Jack Wallage was one of them. There was a strong resentment towards the car. Uh, the idea that the, the street is, is something you play on as a child, uh, that you should have uh, comfort, uh, that it should be comfortable to shop and to walk around, was a very strong sentiment at that time. We didn't call it ecological, uh, but it was in a sense. Um, and what was important was that there was a very strong political debate on uh, who's, uh, who's the owner of the street. The winner in Groningen was definitely the bicycle. It's easy to see how they did it. First and foremost, cars and bikes are separated wherever possible. Where they do meet, cyclists most often have the priority, like on this roundabout. There are special traffic lights, and parking your bike is rarely a problem, particularly at the main railway station, where they have 6,000 spaces. At London Bridge, they have just 400. So, Cycle City, obviously great news for people on bikes. But back in London, the most popular form of transport is the motor car. So what's Groningen like for people who want to drive? I mean, instantly, what do I do here? This is not where I'm meant to be. <gasps> Are they honking me? In the centre of the town, the answer is confusing. Oh, I can't drive up there. Now, back when all of this started in the 1970s, the first thing they did was try and stop cars driving through the middle of town. And so they put a ring road around it. You can drive into the centre, but you have to drive out the same way you came in. So there's no through traffic. And once you're in, there aren't many places you can actually go. So, basically, unless you're making a delivery or you're a taxi, you'd be absolutely mad to try and drive here. But once you get out of the centre, it's a different story. Since so many people have been put off driving in the suburbs, the traffic flows incredibly well. So, Groningen. Mostly easy to drive, beautiful to cycle. But can we really apply any of that to London? A lot of cyclists think we can. Before this year's mayoral election, the capital streets filled with people demanding that we go Dutch. The mayor signed up to the campaign. But given the scale of the task, anybody expecting London's roads to be the same as the Netherlands after just a four-year mayoral term perhaps shouldn't hold their breath. Andrew Cryan reporting there. Well, I'm joined by Mustafa Arif from the London Cycling Campaign, who started the Love London Go Dutch, and by the legendary racing driver Sir Sterling Moss. Welcome to both of you. Can I start with you first of all, Mustafa? I mean, you know, we've watched that film there. Boris Johnson committed himself to Go Dutch. What firm proposals are you hoping to see from him? Well, firstly, I think it's important to recognise that the transformation of London into a place that is safe and inviting for cycling... Is, is it not... safe and inviting for cycling? Surely that's debatable. No, no. The transformation to make London right. safe and inviting for cycling is something that's going to take a long time. It's not going to happen within a single mayorality. It's a multi-decade programme. The Dutch started in the 70s. The Danes started in the 90s. Uh, what we've asked the mayor for are three things. Firstly, we want three flagship schemes in the, ne in the next mayorality, in the next four years, uh, where cycling and walking are prioritised. 
to set the standard and show that these things can be done in London. Have you identified three areas? Uh, we've identified a number of different options, um, but we really want the mayor to take ownership of this and, and work out how he wants to uh, decide this. Because it's got to be done based on, on, on the politics and local priorities and where m m best makes sense. Do you think it's achievable? I mean, has he, Boris Johnson, come up with any firm proposals as to where those pedestrianised areas or areas for cycling might be? Well, he gave two examples at the last Mayor's Question Time. He suggested uh, Vauxhall, um, uh, the gyratory there, as one of the uh, areas that could be done. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head where the other one was that he suggested. But I, but I, I believe that they are giving serious consideration to where they can do this. What do you think of it as an idea, Sterling Moss? I mean, do you think we should be trying to emulate what goes on in other cities in Europe where cyclists really feel much safer? I, I think it's a great idea, but I don't think it's feasible. I mean, because in London we are so closed in, we have so many vehicles, far a density of vehicles in London is higher than anywhere else, and I just don't think it's feasible. One thing I think they should do right away, and that is make it law, you have to wear a helmet. I think it's the first thing to do, so if anybody does fall off, then at least they've got some protection. Have you ever cycled in London? Uh, with a bicycle? Um, no, rarely. No, because I, I, I ride a scooter, which is the same sort of thing, but, it, but it didn't, somebody else doing the work. <laughs> um, so I, it does make a difference. I use I, that all the time. It's the though. feasibility that is key. I mean, we looked at Groningen there, but there's no comparison between that city and London, just in terms of not just its size, but the streets and the number of vehicles and heavy vehicles at that that are on the road. Well, firstly, Sir Sterling talked about making helmets compulsory. And the evidence from the rest of the world is that making helmets compulsory just reduces the number of people All right, cycling. Let's talk about the comparison to cities, because that's what you're here to talk about. Is, is it feasible to make London a cycling city like Groningen? On, on the basis of just looking at them, it, it, it isn't. Well, Groningen is a, more small, is, is a smaller place, but it's not the only place in the Netherlands. All of the Netherlands has good quality cycling infrastructure and high cycling rates. We can look to places like Amsterdam, the bigger cities, and look at the ideas that have been used there. We can look at the ideas that are now being adopted in New York, in Manhattan, where a lot of work has been done recently um, on introducing Dutch-style cycle infrastructure and apply those lessons to London. Yes, although I've just come back from New York and actually they're not as far ahead as, as London is in those terms. So they're only just starting and they're only doing it on the outskirts of Manhattan, not through the centre. Well, that's in, terms, that's in terms of segregated tracks, and yes... But it isn't segregation, you know, what's needed in order to provide safety between cyclists and motorists? In the right places, yes, but what you also saw in Groningen was that what they, what they try and do is reduce the amount of through traffic. And one of the real problems we have with safety of cycling is that there's a lot of rat running through residential areas and other quiet streets where the volume of traffic is just too high. Could it work? I hope it can. I think it is really exciting. We've got a campaign that is really visionary for London. I think it's given a freshness. It's given something that's applicable everywhere. I was really um, delighted to send off the cyclists as they joined the um, the 28th of March, uh, 28th of April cycle ride, and they went off from my constituency because they're campaigning for safer cycling. Brian Dawling, one of the people that was killed at the Bow Roundabout, was from Hounslow. I had a school friend killed on Hounslow High Street. Mm. The mes the messages about safer driving, whether you're a lorry driver or other safer cycling if you are a cyclist as well I think we're all frustrated by those who go through red lights actually but to say we can have a vision for London that isn't just about the car it's about people living walking cycling and families doing that together but, but, but they but they need to, to learn more about it I mean we're told nothing I mean I think frankly that children should they should start teaching children how what, lane discipline that sort of thing I mean bicycles you may be in London there's bicycles all, all over the place well I think they are doing that in different places I was at my old primary school in Heston recently the cycling proficiency yes, test that's the where they're going again. to some extent it's the, the, part of the cycling proficiency is now on the road and I think there can be innovative ways in which we make those changes that can change the whole of London oh, bit just, by bit because you're a local government minister what should should local boroughs be doing to contribute to this? Should there be segregation between vehicles and cycles? I, I think that's a question of horses for courses, uh, and different uh, situations will apply in the centre of London that Sturley's talking about, in Westminster, say, from in my patch in Bromley. I'm very keen to see more people cycling. Boris has, I think, uh, invested more. He's been invested £200 million in uh, promoting cycling in London. He's more committed than uh, anyone, I think, in uh, London politics to cycling. He's a daily cyclist himself. He knows all about it. We are doing um, uh, 
redesign, as you know, at the Bow uh, Roundabout, which was a, a black spot, a real problem for, for accidents in the past. And in fact, that's being redesigned up to the Go Dutch standards. So yes. that is taking on board but those very only, useful but the mayor only expects, Mustafa was making. The mayor only expects 5% of journeys to be made by bike by 2026. Well, we've already seen quite a considerable increase in bike usage in London. More households have got bikes, more cycle rides are taking place, more cycle journeys. We're starting from a different position uh, to many right. uh, of our European colleagues, but it's going in the right direction. And we all, I think, everyone here wants I'm to encourage to, that. I'm going to have to finish it, but Sir Sterling Mustafa Arif, thank you very much.